Welcome back YouTube, we have Ahmed again from In-Depth Tech Reviews and today is a big day for Android users, specifically Pixel users, as Google just released Android 10 for Pixel devices, also known as Android Q, and I'm installing it right now on my Pixel 3 XL to show you all the new changes you are waiting for. But before getting started, let's make sure you subscribe, hit the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. So let's jump in. Before showing you all the changes in Android 10, keep in mind that I created a lot of videos about Android Q Beta, which is now Android 10, and it covers pretty much everything I will mention in this video. So that will be considered as a summary for all the changes of Android 10. And if you are new to Android 10, I think everything I will mention here will be new to you. So I will start with the navigation. In Android 10, the navigation is completely different from Android Pie, so let me give you a quick look at it. To access your app drawer, you can swipe up anywhere on your home screen. And if you want to go home from any app, you just swipe up from the bottom of the screen and you get this nice animation. And if you want to access your recent apps, you do a half swipe and hold, you get your recent apps. And if you want to close an app, you definitely swipe up to close it or swipe down to open it from the recent apps screen. Also in Android 10, there is no longer a back button. So if you want to go back one step, you do a swipe from the edge of the screen from either side, left or right. And if you want to get your hamburger menu, you tap and hold on the edge and then swipe and it will appear for you. Not only this, but you also can change uh, the sensitivity of your back button gesture under settings and then you go to system and then you go to gestures and then you go to system navigation and you have this settings icon beside the gesture navigation and if you tap on it you can change the sensitivity to suit your needs. Also Google is not blocking you to use this gesture navigation you still can use the two buttons navigation uh, like we saw in Android Pie and also you can use the traditional and the old navigation of Android, which is the three buttons navigation where you can access your recent apps, the home button and the back button as before. So you have the choice here, but I um, actually got used to the gesture navigation. I feel it's easier for me to do a back uh, swipe or a back gesture and instead of moving my hand all the way down to go back one step. Google also added a new gesture for launching your Google Assistant. So if you swipe diagonally from the bottom corners, you will be able to launch your Google Assistant, getting this colorful animation. As you see right here, you can do it from the other side as well. So that's pretty much all you need to know about the navigation of Android 10. Next is the black boot screen. So if your phone is set to dark theme and you restarted your phone, you will now get a black boot screen. And in the beta version of Android 10, this didn't work with some people and worked with others. So it's worth trying after installing the final version of Android. First thing you will notice after restarting your phone that the lock screen looks different from Android Pie. So now the lock icon moved from the bottom of the screen towards the top and the clock has been pushed a little bit down. Next is the camera. So if you are on Android 10 and downloaded Google camera version 6.3, the first thing you will notice, you only have three icons at the top. We no longer have the button for changing the white balance. Also night sight moved to the quick toggles instead of showing under more. And if you are using the front camera and you want to use the flash, it's now called illumination instead of flash. Also, if you have, if you want to use Google Lens and you tap and hold on the viewfinder, Google Lens will be launched automatically from the camera app, which is a lot easier to use. Next are the notifications. And when it comes to notifications, Android 10 has a lot of changes. So first, if you are playing a song and you pull down your notification sheet, now you have a progress bar where you can fast forward your track directly from the notification sheet without the need to open the application, which is pretty handy. 
Next, the smart actions you can take from your notifications. So for example, I sent myself a message with a link and it automatically detects that this is a link and it suggests an app to open this link for me, which is in this case, Google Chrome. And when I tap on open link, it opens the link for me straight away without the need to open the conversation. You can also tap and hold on your notification to choose between two options, either alerting, which means every time you get a notification from this app, it will come with sound or vibration, or you can set it to silent, which means that every time you get a notification from this app, the notifications will appear under a category called the silent notifications with no sound or vibration, but you still can see them under your notification shade. Another new change in Android 10 is the ability to add the dark theme quick toggle to your notification shade by tapping this edit button and you will find it somewhere here and you can put it into your notification shade to swap easily between light and dark theme. There are also new changes in Android 10 in different areas. For example, if you press on your volume rockers and then tap this little icon, you will get a volume card where you can change your volume controls right within the home screen without the need to go to settings. But if you still want to go to settings, you can tap on see more. There is also a new feature called the pause app. So if you tap and hold on your app icon, you will get this sand clock. And when you tap on it, the app will be in black and white, which means no notifications will come from this app as long as it's paused. If you want to unpause it, you just tap on it. You will get this overlay menu where you can choose unpause app and it will launch back again. You can do the same exact thing from the recent apps screen where you tap on the icon of the app and hit pause app and it will do the same exact thing. You can also unpause it the same way. Another small visual change, if you have your auto rotate switched off and you hold your phone in landscape mode, now you are getting a bigger rotate icon, which is easier to use. There is a new feature under the digital well-being called focus mode where you can select certain apps and every time you turn on the focus mode, those apps will not be able to send you any notifications. You can also add a quick toggle for the focus mode in your notification shade to turn it on and off. Also in Android 10, if you are using an app that requires you to activate something in settings like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, you no longer need to go to settings or pull down your notification shade to achieve this. It will actually appear within the app itself. So for example, I'm going to use share it as an example. So it's asking me here to turn on the WLAN, which is the Wi-Fi. And once I hit open, it automatically turns on my Wi-Fi without the need to go to settings. So that's pretty handy as well. Also changing the wallpaper in Android 10 looks a little bit different. So for example, if I'm going to use this wallpaper, I now have the option to preview, which will show me the wallpaper in full screen. And the card at the bottom is now transparent with a different set wallpaper button. So it now looks a little bit better. In Android 10, there is a new haptic feedback. So if you are selecting text, and when you move the cursor around, you are, you are feeling a nice haptic feedback with every letter you select. You also get this magnifying glass to show you where exactly your cursor, which is pretty handy and gives you a very nice feeling while selecting your text. Also on Android 10, the share sheet is a lot faster. So if you want to share a photo with someone, it opens immediately. Previously, it takes some time to show up, but it's now fixed. Also, if you take a screenshot, and try to share it from the notification, you will get a quick preview of the photo so you know what you are sharing exactly. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the features I managed to get my hands on in this build of Android 10. Keep in mind that I couldn't get live caption or notification bubbles active on my phone. However, I saw on the Android website that those features are part of Android 10 final release. However, I didn't get them. So please let me know in the comments if you managed to get your hands on any of those two features. Also screen recording totally disappeared from this build of Android 10. So I'm not sure if Google will implement it in the future or it's completely gone. So I hope you like my video and if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.